Hello everyone, this is part 5 on how to make a shoot 'em up game in Scratch. In this tutorial, I will be going over the current code we have, make some changes to the player plane and enemy planes, and add explosions once an enemy plane is destroyed. If you haven't seen parts 1 through 4 yet, check them out, links are in the description below. I will also be sharing this project on my Scratch profile, so if you want, you can check it out later. Anyways, let's get started. So first off, it's been a long time since I made the last video of the series, and since then, the Scratch project editor changed from version 2.0 to 3.0. So I just want to quickly go over the scripts just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Anyways, here are the scripts for the player plane. So this first forever loop here makes the player plane move and point towards the mouse pointer. And the other forever loop here checks for the enemy bullet and enemy planes. And if the player plane touches any of those two, then it decreases its lives by one. And if it has no more lives, then the game ends. Otherwise, it does the flashing hit animation. And the reason why I didn't put this inside of this forever loop is because the flashing animation has these two wait 0.1 seconds block. And since we want the code over here to constantly run, if we added this uh, code into this forever loop, then um, all of this code would have to wait 0.1 seconds twice every time the player plane gets hit. So that's why they're in two separate forever loops. But anyways, on to the next one, so player bullets. So let's see, um, okay, so this is the code that creates the player bullets. So if the player is clicking anywhere on the screen, then this sprite creates clones of itself, alternating to the left side and right side of the player plane. And we do this by setting a variable and changing the x position values for the left side and right side. So as you can see, the x position for the left side is minus 11, while the x position for the right side is plus 11. And uh, when the player bullets are created, we first show them and then make sure that they appear behind the player plane. And then they just move upwards into the screen. And now onto our enemy planes. So let's see. Okay, so this is the code that creates the clones of the enemy planes. So first I just reset all the variables and lists. And then every 2.5 seconds, this sprite creates a clone of itself. And then in the clones, um, there are two main scripts. So the first one is, let's see, over here. So the enemy planes choose a random position from the top of the screen, and then they point towards the player plane, and the code below is the shooting script. So what the enemy plane does is that it changes this variable called counter by one, and then it adds its own direction, x position and y position, to the direction, x position and y position lists, and then it creates a clone of the enemy bullet, and then it waits one second. So every one second, the enemy plane updates its uh, values and then shoots a bullet. So I'll explain um, the counter variable and the lists later, but anyways, I'm gonna move on to the next part of the clone script. So when the clone is spawned, it shows and then it sets its lives to three, and then the enemy plane keeps moving downwards, and it also checks if it's hitting a uh, player bullet, then it decreases its lives by one. And if the enemy plane has no more lives, then it gets destroyed, and then the player gains 10 cash. So yeah, and then now on to the enemy bullet. So for the enemy bullet, it's pretty short, but uh, since the enemy planes create the clones, the bullet goes to the direction, x position, and y position of the enemy plane that created the bullet, and then it just moves forward. And by the way, since there can be several enemy planes on the screen shooting at once, we need to have the counter variable to know which enemy bullet spawns where. But anyways, on to the next sprite. Um, this is the player lives and cash sprite. So this is super simple, but we just um, switch the costume of the sprite based on the player lives. So we have uh, four sprites like this. So this is three lives, two lives, one life, and then zero lives. All right, next sprite. And the last one is the number counter sprite, or the cash. And this just displays how much money the player has. And if we go to our costumes, as you can see, we have the numbers one through nine and then zero. And this just makes sure that the costumes show up correctly based on the cash variable. So you can position the X and Y coordinates of the sprite by changing these two values. And if you want, you can increase or decrease the spacing between each digit by changing this value right here. But anyways, that's pretty much it. So now that I'm done with the explanation, um, I wanted to make a few changes to the game. So I'm gonna first uh, play the game right now. I'm gonna full screen this, okay? So I think the player bullets move a bit too slow 
and I think the player could shoot the bullets faster. So I think I'm going to change a few values, you know, and play around with them, um, see what works. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the player plane, and then, um, or actually player bullet, sorry. And over here, this value here is the reload speed. So I think I actually might create a new variable. So I'm going to go to variables and then create a new variable. I'll call this player reload speed. And then I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to set the player reload speed when the flag is clicked to, uh, let's say, 0 0.07. And then I'm going to drag the player reload speed variable into here. So now we can change how fast the player plane shoots just by editing this one variable. But anyways, I think I want the player plane to shoot a bit faster, so I changed it from 0 0.15 to 0 0.07. And I think I want the bullets to move a bit faster too. So over here, I'm going to make the bullets move, uh, let's say, uh, 14 steps. So a bit faster. And let's see how that looks. Oh, and also, whenever I playtest the game, I will be going in full screen mode because sometimes I might accidentally like drag a sprite or something, but in full screen mode, you can't do that. So whenever I playtest from now on, I will be using full screen mode. But anyways, that's just a quick heads up. Um, now let's test our new reload and bullet speeds. So let's see. So now the player can now shoot bullets much easier. And I think I'm going to increase the speed at which the enemies spawn too. So I'm going to do that real quick. Let's go to the enemy plane. And first things first, I sort of want the enemy planes to spawn in more towards the middle area. So I think I'm going to change this from um, pick random negative 200 to positive 200. And let's see. I think... Um, Creating an enemy plane every 2.5 seconds is a bit too slow. So I'm going to go to operators and then grab a pick random. And I'll make it um, pick random 0 0.5 to like 1.2 seconds. So the game should be a bit harder. Uh, but yeah, let's see how it looks. Um, enemy planes. All right, cool. They spawn way faster. So I think that's pretty good. Um, that's a nice balance change along with the uh, player plane. But yeah, all right, cool. And now the next thing I want to do is to add explosions. So I'm thinking of having some like um, explosion image once the enemy plane dies, like over here or over here once a plane is destroyed. So let's see. First off, let's create a new sprite. And then I'm just going to quickly draw the explosion image. All right, cool. So now I have the explosion sprite. And by the way, also make sure to center this um, in the middle of the cross over here. So I'm just going to estimate uh, right about here, I think. All right. And now let's go back to the scripts. So I'm going to first uh, rename this to um, Enemy Explosion. All right. And I'm thinking that I want the enemy planes to create clones of the explosions once the plane is destroyed. So let's first go to the enemy plane. And I'm going to create the explosions the same way as I created the enemy bullets. So I'm going to go to Variables and then create a new list. So I'll call this um, Explosion x position um, or just explosion x all right click ok and also one more called explosion y and the direction list is not needed because it doesn't matter what the direction of the enemy plane is but anyways let's hide these lists and then when the flag is clicked let's first delete all of explosion x and also delete all of explosion y oops all right, and we also need to make one more variable. Um, let's call it um, explosion counter, I guess. So similar to the counter in the bullets, this is going to be the counter for the explosions. 
so that the explosion clones know which enemy plane to spawn from. So let's hide this and then I will set explosion counter to zero when the flag is clicked. All right. And once the enemy plane is destroyed, we want it to create an explosion. So let's first change the explosion counter by one. And then let's also go to our lists and then add the enemy plane X positions and Y positions to the X position and Y position lists. So let's go to motion and then add X position to explosion X and also Y position to explosion Y. So now I believe this should be fine. Oh yeah, let's go to control and then also create a clone of the enemy explosion. And once the enemy plane is destroyed, we also want it to stop all other scripts in the sprite. And now when the explosion is created, let's first drag a when it starts a clone. The clone's going to need to know which enemy plane to spawn from because there's going to be multiple enemy planes on the screen at once. And there can be multiple explosions happening at once. So in order for the explosion to know which position to come from, it can just go to the X position and Y position in the list based off the explosion counter. So in the explosion sprite, let's first make it show when the clone is created. And I'm going to also make it go to back layer so that it um, goes behind the enemy plane. Or actually, um, that doesn't really matter because the enemy plane is being destroyed. So we can take that out. And now to make it go to its desired X position and Y position, let's go to motion. Let's drag a go to X, Y. And then inside of variables in our lists, let's make it go to um, item. And then let's go to the variables. And let's drag item explosion counter of the explosion X. Let's put this into the X position. And let's right click, duplicate, and go to the item explosion counter of explosion Y. So since the explosion counter variable always increases by one whenever an enemy plane is destroyed, this number is always going to be different because it goes from like uh, one to infinity. So when the enemy explosion sprite is created, it's going to know which X position and Y position to go to because the enemy plane also adds its X position and Y position to the two lists. But anyways, um, let's finish off the enemy explosion sprite. So once it shows and then goes to the X position and Y position, let's make it um, repeat, let's say 10 times. And then I sort of want it to fade out while expanding. So let's go to looks. And then I'm going to grab a change uh, ghost effect by 10. So the ghost effect is just um, how transparent a sprite is. So if the ghost effect is 100, that means the sprite is completely invisible. So this is fine. And then let's also make it change size by, let's say, 8 or something. And lastly, once it's done, let's also delete the clone. And one more thing. I'm going to drag a win flag clicked and then hide this sprite right here. So I'm just going to hide it. All right. And I think that should be fine. So let's try it out. Um, when an enemy plane is destroyed, Oh, nice. Cool. So it creates an explosion like that. Okay. I think it looks a lot better now. I really like the explosions. And as you can see, the explosions go to its desired enemy plane. Oops. Let me try it again. So each explosion goes to its own enemy plane like that. And yeah. So I think I'm going to make the explosions start off a bit smaller, though. They seem a bit too large based off of how large the enemy planes are. So I think when the explosion is first created, I'm going to set its size to something like 80%. So it's a bit smaller. Let's try it out. So when we kill an enemy plane, all right, the explosions are a bit smaller. I think it looks more realistic. And yeah. Now we have some nice explosions in our shoot 'em up game. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe too if you haven't already. In the next video, I will add different types of enemy planes and possibly start working on a leveling system. 
Also, I have shared this project on my Scratch profile, so if you want to check it out, link is in the description below. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!